Right, well, another group that we have, of course, are the Zonartic Pelagoniums. And anybody who watches this channel may have seen a video that I did uh, in the summer of last year with Steve Pollard, the chairman of the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. And that video really does give a good background uh, to, the, to the Zonartic group. Uh, now, I've got um, several of these outside. They do generally prefer, perhaps unusual for a sort of zonal hybrid cross, um, a, a cooler climate. Uh, much prefer it cooler, and I put them outside a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I just uh, put in a little bit of a uh, small video I did of some of the ones that are flowering outside. There's not that many of them flowering at the moment, but there'll be plenty of them coming into flower in the next uh, few weeks. Okay, well, I'm just uh, having a look at uh, my sort of area where I've got my zone artics, and one or two, uh, well, I think it's just one at the moment, is coming into flower. This is Rushmore Tiber, named after rivers, of course, some of these. Um, so we can let's just get up and have a good look at that one. Um, and that's really quite a nice blue. I mean, they're all fantastic plants, make brilliant cut flowers. There is another head over here. Oh, behind you, so to speak lovely shades of uh, pink on a sort of cream colored base uh, just blowing a bit in the breeze there but um yeah i mean uh, it's a really really nice plant right now the other main group particularly uh, the type that i particularly like are the regals now regal varieties and i might as well just get one of my new seedlings haven't i now regals are generally known for their their huge flower heads and uh they are relatively unique in the pelagonium world for having absolutely massive blooms i mean these can come uh, uh in various sizes really some are a bit more sort of smaller and compact but you can get some very very large ones such as in this case now with this size difference you get a lot of uh blooms that can be a little much more frilly you get some that are very uh large and open uh circular this one's going to be quite like that and you get others that are really quite frilly um almost making them look double and Lara Waltz is a good example of that. Lara Waltz. And uh, this is one of Cliff Blackman's, a famous Australian breeder who we lost a year or so ago. Um, it's a lovely bloom, lovely truffly, I call it truffle, really tight. Uh, makes a stunning bloom. Uh, and I find that this does better outside as well, as many regals do. Right, now angel pelagoniums, um, have generally very small leaves, little small serrated leaves, uh, and a little small flower, uh, relatively small flower, usually deeply coloured on the top and uh, paler lower petals. This sort of large one that I've brought in for outside actually, because I haven't got any in the glass house, I don't exhibit them. Um, this is uh, one that I bred quite a number of years ago. It's, a, it's got a strong scented leaf and um, the original breeding of them in, I think, the 1920s uh, did use Pelagonium crispum, which is a species that's got a scent. So uh, a number of the uh, angel types do have a scent to them, and this one does. This one's got a, a typical sort of uh, angel bloom, really. Single, got the, got the darker upper petals and uh, lighter lower petals, although this one has got quite good coverage underneath. They, they flower like crazy from now on. This is all just full of bud now. It's a semi-shaded position outside, really. A lot of pelagonians, particularly the regal, prefer it a bit cooler. They don't like a lot of storex sun, whereas the zonals don't mind the warmth. And that's notable, particularly in the winter. You need a slightly warmer glasshouse, ideally, for zonals. Whereas regals, in particular, like it slightly cooler in the winter uh, and grow better for it. Right, well, I touched on uh, scented with the angels there. And so let's move over to the another one of the large groups of pelagoniums, uh, the scented leaf varieties. Always very popular, widely sold in uh, UK garden centres, so you don't necessarily 
need to uh, go to a specialist nursery to get hold of them. But realistically, to get proper name varieties, you do need to go to a specialist nursery because some of the names that they're giving the plants this year, I've noticed in garden centres, are just referring to the, uh, the technically the scent smell, which I find just completely bizarre. This, is, this one in particular is a Tower of Roses, a very common variety and a very, very strong, sweet scent. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's a good number. Um, many, many of them uh, covering many, many different scents. I'm not going to list them all here. As I say, go to the, uh, the PAGS website under Pelagonium Basics to, to have a read about um, scented in a bit more detail. But um, they've usually got a, a fairly deeply cut, often hairy type leaf. Uh, with small blooms, uh, small sort of single type blooms. Now one or two are a bit larger. Um, now I've got a plant of uh, copthorn out here which I'll just show you actually. It's a large plant of copthorn which um, is absolutely huge. That's in about a 50 centimetre pot and the actual plant is probably two foot round and it'll get even bigger as the uh, summer goes on, just beginning to bloom. Not sure whether you can see that. Right, now that copthorn um, realistically is almost got what we would call a lot of unique in it and the uniques are another group uh, that I don't grow. They're very big, strong growing uh, plants. Many of them have often got a uh, relatively spicy scent to the leaves, but uh, again, smaller flowers. Copthorn's pretty much an exception. It has got a hint of a scent on the big leaves, but um, it's more just a hint of a slightly spicy scent, but uh, uh, not too much. But um, that's more noted, I think, for its bloom, that one, Copthorn. But uh, the Uniques are another group, very similar in uh, leaf style to, that, to, the, uh, to the Copthorn there. Serrated, slightly elongated, but you do get a, good, uh, get a good coverage of flower type, but they're just a bit on the small side. But if you want something to grow in a really big pot, the Uniques are really superb for it. Okay, well, I think that just about sums up this look of uh, a fair number of the different varieties that you can get of Pelagonium. As I said, if you want a lot of detail and a lot of uh, good descriptive writing on the PAGS website, just go to uh, the, the Pelagonium and Geranium Society website under About Us, and then there's a sub-menu that basically says Pelagonium Basics. And then you can see all listed and descriptions of all the different types of Pelagonium that there are. There are a number of quirky ones that uh, I've certainly not got room to grow these days. Uh, slightly slight variations of the theme of the main ones that we've already gone through. So it's always worth having a look and uh, seeing the different types. And as I said, if you ever want to get hold of these, you would need to go to a specialist Pelagonium nursery. So that's it from me for, the, for today. I'll see you again soon.